I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight. Tell your neighbor it's only going to take a few minutes. I want to talk to you about the healing power of the Father's love. It's actually been flowing down in here ever since the worship team started that first song here tonight. I don't know if you noticed that. And I just declare to you tonight that the healing of our hearts many times sets the stage for the healing of our bodies. Not every time, but many times. That is what has to happen. And I want to start with you in a scripture in Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. As you begin to come into a maturity in your walk with the Lord, you will find yourself more frequently saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, instead of saying, Bless my soul, O my Lord. <laughs> now, it's okay to say that. It, there's nothing wrong with it. But the words of Scripture here are, Bless the Lord, O my soul. When you think of the amazing privilege of a being like you, a being like me, to be told by the God of the universe, the one who made it all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have an ability to bless him? <laughs> I mean, we're used to, oh, Lord, we need more, and we do, and praise God, and he just keeps pouring it down. He's doing it here tonight. But... To rise up into a place of maturity and begin to and begin to say, wait a minute, there's some things I can do that will actually bless the Lord. Wow. And so the psalmist says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now follow carefully now in this next verse. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals a few of your diseases. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I was reading from the UV there, the unbelief version. I was at a meeting recently that was put on as a meeting in support of revival in a region of our country. And I went because I wanted to support the cause of revival. But there came a point in the message of one of the men that was speaking where I nearly wept out loud. I had to control myself because he said what we are going to do is we are we are going to concentrate on on strengthening the body of Christ with teaching and and getting souls saved and we're not going to do much with healing because this body is going to die anyway and I sat there in my chair and I almost wept now, I want to see as many, many souls saved as possible. But I'm telling you from experience of 17 years of doing this, it's much easier to get those souls saved when the power of God is flowing and miracles are happening and healings are popping out and clear, open testimonies of people that I've never seen in my life stand up on our platform and they tell what Jesus has just done. Just like our young lady there in Little Falls, Minnesota. That was all. She got a new kidney, basically, is what happened in that service that night. 
So the verse actually reads, if we read the real Bible, the RB, <laughs> who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Now, for that to happen, I believe we're going to have to have greater understanding. Perhaps than what we are walking in right now. In fact, I need that myself. But I want to try to give you something here tonight that I believe will really help you with this. You see, there, there are some diseases and illnesses that are just, they're viruses, they're their uh, germs, their their uh, biological, you, you can very easily explain them biologically. They need a direct encounter with the power of God where the name of Jesus is shown to be higher than they are and the person is healed. There are things that happen to the human body through accidents, traumas, and things that happen of that nature. We've had so many people healed of those things over the years. It's been amazing. Where you take authority over trauma itself and the effects of trauma. But there is a whole class of diseases that are brought on. We literally bring them on ourselves. This is not everything that goes wrong with the human body, but it is some things. And... In a nutshell, what happens is we allow ourselves to have our inner person soaked in fear, in stress, in anxiety. And believe me, the enemy of our soul is working overtime on our body too. These diseases, these illnesses, you could say, start in the inside, in our souls, and work their way out. Sometimes they take years and years of time to actually manifest. And tonight, I want to throw out a challenge to you that I believe will really help you if you take it up. Because all of us in this room here tonight have been born and raised in what is called the Western world. Most of you here have been right here in this country, the United States of America. And because of that, we have certain, shall we say, philosophical underpinnings to our worldview that are just there. They go by our historical explanations for them, there are philosophical ones, there's religious, there's all kinds of stuff like that. And for just a moment tonight, I would like to challenge you with this. If you and I, instead of holding a Greek view of our bodies, if we decided to hold a Hebrew view of our bodies, Everyone scream right out loud, What's the difference, doctor? What's the difference, doctor? <laughs> There's a big, huge, hairy difference. <laughs> the Greek view of, a, of, <laughs> of our, it's not just because we grow hair on our heads. You know? The Greek view of, of the body basically comes from the philosopher Plato who taught, basically, that a human being is this pure spirit thing that is just kind of there, and it gets imprisoned in this fleshly carcass thing called the body. Now, he didn't say it in exactly those words, but people that followed him for centuries afterwards developed it until this is, by the time of Jesus and by the time of Paul, this is what people were believing in the uh, Greek and Roman world. And it has come down to this day to us as, as an unspoken, many times unconscious underpinning of much of what we say and do. Somehow, if we could just get this pure spirit freed from this prison of this body. Now, I know Paul teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 
to be uh, present uh, present in the body is to be absent with the Lord. Paul has clear teaching. Paul isn't teaching Platonism when he teaches that. Paul is a man much more influenced by the Hebrew view of the body. And so by contrast, the Hebrew view of the body is that the body is good. And that in your body you have a soul that is your, your life breath, it is your emotions, it is your, your, what animates you and keeps you going, and then you have a spirit, your ability to communicate with God. The part of you that is, that is eternal and forever. But the main difference is that the Hebrew view views your body as a good creation of God instead of a prison house for this, this supposed pure spirit that came from somewhere and now it's trapped here. That's very, very important. And if you would begin to treat your body as though it were the good creation of God, instead of a prison house for a, for a pure spirit that somehow needs to escape, I think you would be taking a huge step toward health, toward wholeness, and you would be putting yourself in alignment and in agreement with God's plan who created these bodies in the first place. Anybody say amen to that tonight? See, that's quite a difference in viewpoint, isn't it? Now, I'd like to take you to the book of Proverbs for a few minutes and just show you we're talking about the healing power of Father's love. We are created by a good God, we were created to be good to be righteous, to be holy before him. You know the story. Sin came into the world through Adam and Eve. And Satan is interested in disrupting and destroying and killing and stealing and doing all that stuff. But then Jesus came. Hallelujah. And he's giving life. But the book of Proverbs has some very interesting things to say about our bodies if we will hear them and if we will see them through the Hebrew view of the body. And so in Proverbs chapter 14, if you would turn there for a moment. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30 says, A sound heart is life to the body. Now, in that statement, I don't believe it is first talking about your physical heart. I believe it's talking about your spiritual heart as the seat of your personality and your being inside yourself. If that is sound, it is putting out life to the body. But what could come against it? Look in the second part of the verse. But envy is rottenness to the bones. Say, well, if somebody's bones are getting rotten, there must be, that's in their physical person. That must be, you know, we've got to go for some kind of physical cure. Well, what if they have been entertaining envy inside of them? And what if the mercy and grace of God is so amazing, they come and they repent of their envy, and that work of, of envy to make the bones rotten begins to cease, and they begin to go in the other direction. You see, a lot of this stuff that is called, that we're talking about here tonight, many of these things are called autoimmune diseases. And there are many of them. And another question we might ask is, why, and you're going to see it in several verses I'm going to read here in a moment, why is this so concerned with our bones? 
I mean, yeah, you know, our bones are important, but, you know, our organs, we would say in a Western view, well, our organs are too, and our brains, and our, our glands, and our, you know, everything else for health. But the Bible is constantly putting forth truth about our bones. And I believe it is because it is in our bones that we have the seat of our immune systems. Now, that's something we know from modern science. And that is where everything is produced that gives us the ability to ward off disease, sickness, illness at a whole number of levels, but especially our bodies. So if you jump over to uh, Proverbs 15 and verse 4, It says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Hmm. Now, is our wholesome tongue literally a tree of life? If I stick out my tongue, is it going to have a branch shooting out there with leaves on it? And, you you know, and all. No, it's, it's a figure of speech. It's actually a metaphor. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. In other words, the words that are dispensed by a tongue that is whole, that is healthy, when the person's interior is healthy, is going to be dispensing life constantly. Is this true? But perverseness in it Here's the opposite in the second part of the verse. Perverseness in it, that is the tongue, breaks the spirit. This is why the enemy of our souls wants us defeated. It's why he wants us in depression. It's why he wants us in defeat. Because pretty soon, as human beings, our mouths are going to begin dispensing things in agreement with that condition and that perspective. And it's going to make it worse until our spirits are broken. Now, the effect of having our spirits broken is very, very severe. Jump down to uh, chapter 15 and verse 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. There it is again. Here are two different things that can break the human spirit. The first one is perverseness in the speech that is spoken over the person can break their spirit. The second one here in in verse 13 is... By sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The excessive arrival and concentration of sorrow can also break your spirit. Now, where is all this going? Turn over to verse to chapter 17. And verse 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Why all this about the attack on our, on our spirits and breaking our spirits except that when our spirits are broken, our bones begin to dry? Man. And I am telling you tonight that there is a whole class of diseases that multiply and grow and foster themselves against people because of permissions given in the soul many times that we aren't even aware of. So let me give you a couple of testimonies. 
here tonight. Everyone scream right out loud. We want testimonies now, doctor. We want testimonies now. Doctor. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Every last Friday of the month, we have a meeting in our ministry building called Friday Night Fire. And it has been amazing to see. We started that in uh, January of last year. So we're going to have one this Friday night, this a week from tonight. But I want to tell you what happened at our one last uh, February. I was standing there in the hallway greeting people as they came in. And this woman came in in obvious duress. She said, I have so much pain in my back, I can hardly stand up, so I'm going to sit down if you don't mind. She said, I have had everything that the doctors can give me up to shots for this pain. And my friend told me about this place and that you people believe God here. I said, well, you heard correctly, we do. And we're going to minister to you here tonight. And somehow she sat through that whole service, and she came up to me at the end of the service, still in this terrible, excruciating pain, that even shots, shot right into her veins, could not alleviate and, and in, into the, that part of her back could not alleviate that pain. So I started praying for her. And all of a sudden, as I was praying for her, I heard this word that I, every once in a while I hear this when I'm praying for people to be healed. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness, unforgiveness. So I said to her, um, do you have some people in your life that did some things and you haven't forgiven them. And she started to weep. And I said, okay, now before we can go further here, you're going to need to forgive them. And as we delved into it a little bit, and I, I don't really believe in counseling people per se while you're trying to get them healed, but sometimes you gotta dig, you got to dig in a little bit. And it wasn't really so much what people did to her as what they said. And I said, okay, now God's going to give you grace. And I believe you're going to be able to forgive them from your heart. And Jesus is really going to meet you here tonight. She said, okay, okay. So I led her in a prayer of, of forgiveness of these people. And I, she was sincere. She meant it, and, and she said, but the pain is still there. It's just, just as great as it was before. I said, okay, let's pray some more. So we started in praying some more. Now this time, I had my eyes opened in the spirit, and I saw this huge dagger sticking out of her back in the spirit. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. Those words, did you ever hear the phrase, the person was stabbed in the back? Not literally, with a, with a literal steel knife, but they were stabbed in the back by what the person said. That's what had happened to this gal. Now she had forgiven him. I said, wow, I, I'm seeing this dagger sticking out of your back. May I pull that thing out of there? She said, yes, please. So we prophetically pulled it out and threw it on the ground. Now get this, I, I'm training you right now while I'm giving you this testimony. There's some of these things you've got to press in a little bit and stay after it. She said, the pain is still just as bad as it was before. I said, okay. I said, why don't you try bending over? Because <laughs> we had released a lot of stuff. I had released a lot of stuff on her by what I was saying. Good stuff. She gave me the look. <laughs> she, 
she doesn't do bending over, okay, in her condition. I said, no, just go a little ways and then go a little more. And obey what I say to you because I'm speaking to you from Jesus. And she started going slow by slow by slow by slow. And by the time she got horizontal with her torso, she started to, to cry even more and to weep and then to scream, the pain is gone, the pain is gone, the pain is gone. Hallelujah! But what that testimony illustrates as we've gone through these scriptures here is what we read in 15.4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it, that is the tongue, breaks the spirit. Her spirit was broken by those words, and, and in the spirit, a dagger was stuck in her back, and it had implications into her physical body. You got to take a Hebrew view of the body to understand that. In the Greek view, oh, the body is just a hunk of meat. Here, let's just take it to the doctor. He'll he'll shoot it up with something, or he'll give you something, and you'll be okay. Now, sometimes that works, but it didn't work in her case. We had to get down to some spiritual roots that actually from the inside out of what had been deposited in her by others negatively was coming out into her physical body. And she was completely healed that night. She left, she left the building that night completely set free and is rejoicing in her freedom tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will speak briefly. You asked for testimony, so I will speak briefly of a young lady in North Dakota who my wife ministered to back several years ago. She came from, we'll just say, a denominational background that caused her to not believe in healing. <laughs> so she married this guy from the Pentecostal church, and he did believe in healing. And he persuaded her to come to this meeting where we were ministering in this church. He also, with, <laughs> with great persuasion, persuaded her to come up to the front for ministry at the end of the service. And when my wife saw her, she immediately knew what to do. She reached out her arms to her and she took her and held her to herself for a long time and loved the Father's love into her into her broken daughter heart within her. Now, this woman had a five-year-old son. She and her husband did. She was in such a condition of fibromyalgia that she could not even have her boy come on her lap or hold him in any way or anything like that. She would always have to say, no, don't touch mommy now, it just hurts too much from the fibromyalgia. But when she went home that night, after the father's unconditional love coming and putting her back together on the inside, the effects of that began to come out to the outside already that night. By the next day, she actually was able to have her son on her lap and hold him. And I imagine, you know, you know what five-year-olds do when you hold them. They bounce, they jump, they run, they twist, they turn. We've got a bunch of them, I know, <laughs> okay? Grandkids. The only ministry that was done to that woman, as far as I know, was my wife holding her in her arms and letting herself become a vessel through whom the Father's love could come and touch her broken heart. Isn't that amazing? We've seen her several times since then, and she is doing very well. And then we come to chapter 17 and verse 22. 
We're talking about the healing power of the Father's love. Verse 22, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. That's Satan's goal. He wants to dry your bones because once your bones begin to dry, all kinds of things can happen to your body. And the names, there are many that we could name here tonight of what begins to happen. But I'll just tell you one testimony. This one happened in uh, central Minnesota. I gave an invitation for people to be healed at the end of the service. This woman came up. She said, I have fibromyalgia. She said, according to the doctors, I have 33% bone loss in my body. She said, I want to be healed. Now, this was one of those times where I have this every once in a while where I just open my mouth and some words come out. <laughs> it's kind of like speaking in tongues, but it's in English. <laughs> Seriously. It doesn't happen, you know, real frequently, but when it does, it, it's very powerful. And that's what happened with this woman. When I, I, I was not myself processing what I was saying. Here's what came out of my mouth after she told me that. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. It was a verbatim quote of this verse. And when she heard that, this is what she said. Oh, she said, my whole life I've quoted the first part that you just said there. Does it really say that in the second part? She says, I know, a merry heart does good like a medicine. But I, I said, get your own Bible and look it up. It's Proverbs 17, 22. She got her own Bible off the chair. And she read it. Then I stepped forward and I just laid my hand on her head. And I just prayed a very short, simple prayer. And boom, she hit the deck. And she laid on that floor for almost an hour that night. And I never got to talk to her that night, but she came back the next night. And this is what she said when she got up to testify. <laughs> She said, all day long today, I've been having this pressure inside my body. It's good pressure. It doesn't hurt. I, I feel my arm bones, my leg bones, my ribs, everything. They're, they're pressing against my, my muscles and the, and the other bones. They're getting bigger. <laughs> That's what she said. And we were like, whoa, you know, awesome. And then a year later, I went back there to that place. And I was walking in the foyer of the church before the meeting started, and here she came. And she was walking up to me like this. And I said, what is that? She didn't say hello. She didn't say, how are you? She's coming, she's coming like this. I said, what is this? She says, that, sir, is a zero. That is how much bone loss I have in my body now. According to three clinic checks with the doctors, I am completely healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I did not pray for her bones to be healed. I, when I prayed for her, I did not speak anything to her bones. I spoke to her broken spirit. And I released a greater anointing of the Father's perfect love on her broken spirit within her. And then she laid on, on the floor for almost an hour under that glory of God and that, that perfect love that casts out fear. And what I believe is, as her spirit within her was healed, her heart, I believe her body just jumped in there and started taking care of business itself. That's what I believe. 
And I'm telling you these things tonight because there are people all around you that need the healing that comes by the Father's perfect love. And many other kinds of healings as well. And I am so far out of my mind <laughs> that I believe Jesus can just as well heal people through you as through me. That's what I believe. Hallelujah. So I want to ask you to stand up tonight. Remember now, this is, these are some things. These are the things that have to do with, you know, the immune system. And the, I've named a few names of things here tonight that, that uh, are, are with this, uh, this part of the program. There are many other things that go wrong with people's bodies that just, you just need to take authority over them. You just need to, to uh, command them to be whole. And uh, other things. But these... And what's nice about this is you have the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you in ministering to people. And I believe you guys are going to have opportunities in Walmart, <laughs> in uh, Kroger. I was in your Kroger today. It's a great place for healing people. <laughs> it takes really long in the checkout line. It's a great place to... <laughs> That's a great place to turn around and then notice needs that are happening because you won't be holding anything up. You, you just go ahead, you know. <laughs> and all kinds of other places you will be. And here's what I want to ask you tonight as we come to the end of this service. If you are willing to take an assignment from me, a doctor who's out of his mind. <laughs> and that would be, after you've been ministered to here tonight, that sometime between now and tomorrow night when you come back here, you are going to find, a, you're going to discover a person to minister healing to. Might be in their spirit, might be in their body. Uh, if you're willing to do that, I'll give you, let's see, I'll give you 22 hours. It's, it's uh, just a hair after 9 o'clock, and we start at 7 tomorrow night. If you're willing to do that, I want you to come on up here, and I want to lay my hands on you and believe that God is going to flow through you. We are, we are dealing here with... Come on, brother, you're laughing back here. No, you. Come on, yeah. Oh, you just got here. You're, you're a prime candidate for this. <laughs> you don't know what you might think is a simple healing or a simple miracle could do in this city. Two weeks ago, I was in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and a pastor's son called his high school friend who had such a terrible problem with his knees that he couldn't play basketball anymore. And over the phone, his kneecaps turned in position. He, the boy could feel them move <laughs> until his legs were perfectly straight. And he texted a picture and we all saw it by the end of the service from this boy's phone. He te texted a picture of his legs from the above the knee down to the ankle that they were perfectly straight. It so shook that family. Now get ready. Uh, because he literally felt the presence of a healing angel in his room. And he said so. It so freaked out his mother that she called the pastor's wife and talked to her from 11 at night till 12.30 in the morning. No, I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, dear. But it has had an impact in the city. This family is a prominent family in the city there. 
and everybody's talking about it. That's what's awesome. And and they're what they're talking about is I, I didn't believe before that God could do this, but this God that they're b- believing and that they're preaching and that they're standing for at that church there, this God is doing this stuff. He cared that much that he would heal this boy's knees like that. That's the God we serve. 